good morning or good afternoon or good evening whenever you're listening to this welcome back to the breakfast with ted flicks podcast we are breaking down once again house of the dragon this time it's season two episode two rhaenyra the cruel quote unquote rhaenyra the cruel strap in we have the definitive top five list so without further ado let's get into it first and foremost we gotta call some people out you know what time it is it's time for our dishonorable mentions who's the first person on our dishonorable mentions let's see let's think about it who could it possibly be oh this guy why you may ask the idea of using jaharis to blame rhaenyra have a little smear campaign against rhaenyra call her rhaenyra the cruel that's got to be a dishonorable mention but yeah number one dishonorable mention is got to go to that guy sir otto you are automatically in the dishonorable mentions it's a way of manipulating the population with fake news and as cruel as this society is no one likes a dead baby so in otto's job it's a weapon to employ in terms of public opinion literally admits it right there oh yeah <laughs> literally use this to my advantage to my political gain a dead baby good job otto yeah that's what everyone just loves about you dude uh dishonorable mention number two do we even you guys already know i don't even really have to explain but it's sir crispin he is now limiting his instagram comments because everyone is just ganging up on him right look at this where were you when the heir to the throne was murdered and we just get people straight up saying i hate you okay you hate his character but like he did nothing wrong in real life that we know of and we know of so yeah sir kristen cole obviously or straight up gaslighting sir eric or Auric. <laughs> don't even get me started on that whole thing that oh is it eric or is it Auric? do we even really know at the end of the day who's who i don't know well yeah i do know but i'm not gonna lie this might be my favorite one man i hope someone jumps this guy not that i'm wishing someone in real life jumps this guy i'm just saying it's kind of a funny comment <laughs> but yeah obviously him just calling out what's his face auric with an a you know because he's working for this pussy <laughs> sir kristen cole but there's actually one more dishonorable mention the last dishonorable mention it's allison hightower she's watching her son mourn the death of his son you know He's just in his private chambers, just weeping, crying, bawling, and she just walks away, right? She doesn't comfort him. She doesn't do anything. She just strips down, and guess who's waiting for her? Oh, Sir Crispy. Sir Crispy, about to, I'm not gonna finish that. Your imagination can go there. If there's any confusion, the difference is very clear. <laughs> like, crying child here's the mother this is this is what mothers do they comfort their crying child they they're there for their child mothers are there for their children right i think that makes sense but not allison no not allison i mean she's there just i guess making more children you know like the greens they're just trying to hold on to what was given to them you know but they're trying to fight for their rightful inheritance so the difference is clear it's really clear as it is right here <laughs> comfort sad boy Aegon and be a mother nah get heft by crispy again yep allison you are once again in the dishonorable mention i mean the drake meme says it all it really says it all comfort sad boy Aegon and be a mother nah i'ma just go get crispy creamed again <sighs> i I tried not saying it, but it was too natural to say it. I just had to say it. All right. And then, oh, oh, I almost forgot. I actually almost forgot this. Um, not only is Allison a dishonorable mention because of her terrible mother skills with Aegon, you know, just letting him cry, not comforting him, what all, at all. Um, but it also because her other son, Aemon, is actually Lord Voldemort. I mean, I'm not trying to body shame him, 
like some of these comments say, right? I'm, I'm with them, right? But let's see here. Okay. I'm about to show you guys two images. I want you to tell me what the difference is between these two images. Are you ready? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. So here's one image. Okay. Is that burned into your retinas yet? Okay. Just, okay. Here's the second image. Okay. Now tell me which one is Aemon Targaryen. <laughs> I don't see a difference. What is the difference between these images? You tell me. You tell me. Literally who's who. We're, we're like who's who for the twins? No. Who's who between these people? Huh? So yeah, Aemon Targaryen being having to resort to paying for flea bottom wenches and comforting them with a skin and bones body, right? I mean, dude's clearly got some mommy issues, and that's brutal. So Alicent, good job, Alicent. Your son is now the Voldemort of his flea bottom wench taverns. Nice job. Very, very good. Very good. And by very good. I mean, once again, very good job for being a part of the dishonorable mentions. Two weeks in a row, Alicent, you, Sir Crispin, and your dad, Sir Otto. So those are the dishonorable mentions. Had to get those out of the way because, man, those were atrocious. But guys, we're moving on from dishonorable mentions. And you know what's next. Well, I'll tell you what's next. We're getting into our top five. Our number five spot is actually the only dragon moment of the episode. I know, I know. You're thinking, was there really not a single dragon moment this entire episode? But there was, just one single one. Damon on Seraxes leaving for Harrenhal. I'm a big fan of seeing dragons in a show called House of the Dragon. I know they're setting up for big things to come in next week's episode, you know. Things are about to get interesting next episode, for sure. I think the rumored title for next episode is The Taking of Hall. That's just a rumor. But if it's really that, that should deliver and be pretty awesome. I'm, I would be pretty hyped for that. So, yeah. Definitely hyped to see some dragon action. And that's why Damon flying on Seraxes is the number five spot. Because that was the only moment that we saw a dragon flying in the episode. That's it. It was just like a 30 second little clip. We saw a little bit of sea smoke in the distance. And we have other people who are getting ready to get their dragons. Eamon's ready. Bela's going to be on Moon Dancer. Jace is going to be on Veer Max. So the pieces are moving into place. The board is almost set. And it's almost time. It's almost time for some dragon fights. So I'm hyped about that. I am. But that's why Damon riding to Heron Hall on Caraxes, Seraxes, whatever, however you pronounce it. Damon riding his dragon, that's the number five spot. But on to our number four spot. I got to give serious props to the number four spot. This took me by surprise. It's got to be Aegon's snap at the beginning of the episode. It's a little sad that he's destroying Viserys's uh, model of old Valyria. This is literally Viserys when Aegon is snapping. Just watching Aegon trash his Lego set that he spent his entire life to build. Brutal. <laughs> He's not upset about Alice and Kin with Sir Kristen or anything like that. No. Viserys spent his whole life building that Lego set of old Valyria. And Aegon just has to trash it. Just destroys it. I mean, I get it. It's a a justified response to hearing your child in the unfortunate news with Jaharis. I get it. But, you know, your dad spent his entire life building that Lego set and it, you just destroy it. That's brutal. Brutal, man. And then I did like in the Green Council scene that my here it is. My son is my legacy. My son is heir to the Iron Throne. I mean, dude, his performance, just the contrast versus how he was in the first episode. I gotta give props to him. I it really took me by surprise just how much of a contrast it was. The Lord oh, it, Commander of my King's Guard. I was a bed, Your Grace. This part, a bed. A bed. A bed. Instead of safeguarding the sanctity of my family. <laughs> and I mean, like, look at this, like, like this part, like. There is more for us now in battle. That compared to like Aegon in the first episode, it is. I mean, that's very good acting. That's that's really good. Gotta give it up to Aegon and his snap. Just how he 
snapped and just popped off this episode. Great contrast and was not a Joffrey 2.0. I think he's definitely his own character, which is good. That's what I wanted. So Aegon snap, that's got to be the number four spot. But coming in at our number three spot, it's got to be actually the climax of the episode, which is the Eric versus Arik fight. They just show up at Dragonstone and they're just like, oh, brother. But it's just one of those scenes I feel like once you've seen it, then you're just like, oh, yeah, that that happened, right? It was kind of cool to see him sneak into Dragonstone. He sees his brother and he's like, oh, my brother doesn't have a helmet on, so I guess I'm going to have to take the helmet off. And somehow this works. That part I was a little like, OK, right. To me, it's just not that great of a scene because it's a predictable outcome no matter what, right? Like, you just know that Arik isn't going to succeed on his mission. You just know. And you kind of figure the twins are going to run into each other at some point. You know, kind of gives me a little bit of, like, Anakin Obi-Wan vibes. A little bit. Arik is, like, Anakin. The anti-Eric is Arik. And Obi-Wan is, like, Eric, you know, in the right. And Eric has to finish finishing blow to Arik or Anakin. So I like those kind of like similarities and seeing brother against brother. I think it's cool in that sense, but how rewatchable is the scene? I guess it's rewatchable just cause it's a, it's a fight scene of brothers and twins. It's kind of cool. But then like, obviously the ending is pretty brutal, right? Eric just has to take matters into his own hands, which is sad. It's definitely brutal. Eric just being like, I can't live without my twin pieces out. It's not the most rewatchable, enjoyable scene. So the fact that it's not that rewatchable and it's kind of predictable and it's just literally this Spider-Man meme. But in Game of Thrones, I mean, it's just mid. The last thing I will say about the Arik Eric fight, I think if anything, it just shows and kind of foreshadows how bloody and brutal the fights coming up ahead are going to be. So if it's going to be anything as brutal and as bloody as this fight is just on dragon back cool sign me up i'm all in i think this is just a perfect spot to have the Arik eric fight be at number three because i have two more less predictable and more rewatchable and enjoyable scenes coming in at our top two spots coming in at our number two spot has got to go to the rhaenyra daemon confrontation i mean rhaenyra in general is just a standout she's a cinema she is just a cinema i could watch her forever you know that song cinema anyways let's talk about this look that rhaenyra gave to damon right because this is really the start of the confrontation right she settles down <laughs> dude when eric was still alive that's hilarious and she gives this look like, oh, hey, what's up, husbuncle? And he's got the smallest little smirk on his face. It's just like, dude, did you really have to like have any kind of smirk on your face? You just had to be cheesing. You just couldn't hold it together. So this one council, you couldn't just lock it in, Damon. He said, I'm, I'm crystal clear. Aemond, the son of Aegon, the usurper. Pretty clear instructions, I can't be blamed. What? What's the big deal, right? I can't be responsible. Obviously, Rhaenyra is not having that. If Aemond could not be found, what were your instructions then, right? She's like hitting the issue right on the head, just getting right to the core of the issue. He can't even look at it, right? And he's like, it didn't concern that of a little child. This is a great line where she says, so we've come to it at long last. He says, I cannot trust you, Damon. And she says, I've never trusted you wholly, much that I wish to or willed myself to, but now I've seen that your heart only belongs to you. I just love that little bit of dialogue because yeah, that is definitely the cornerstone of relationships. That's gotta be the foundation when it comes to any kind of relationship is trust. And if she doesn't trust her husband completely, like she doesn't now with Damon, or has never really trusted him wholly yeah that's gonna be a problem but then damon's just like i've served you faithfully she's like really have you or have you just been using me as a tool to try and grasp that stolen inheritance then we get the double cup slap from damon damon's like am i not about to raise an army 
and go to Heron Hall in your name, Rhaenyra, in your name. And oh, babe, don't cry. Don't cry, babe. I'm here. You can trust me. You can trust me. Holy, holy. She's like, do you accept me as your queen and ruler? And there's a very, very long pause from Damon. Extremely long. And then she says, or do you now even cling to what you think you have lost? And Damon pauses for even longer. And he's like, what I think I've lost? Just essentially saying like, what do I think I've lost, Rhaenyra, huh? Because I still definitely have it. You know, that's essentially what he's saying. And then Damon really just goes full on Mr. Ego right here. He says, he was afraid of me. He knew your legacy, unlike mine, would never outshine his own. But then Rhaenyra really snaps and says, it was not because he was afraid of you, Damon. He was not afraid of you, Damon. You got it all twisted. And her acting in this scene, she really, she really pops off right here. Of me. Afraid of me. Legacy, unlike mine, would never outshine his own. He was not afraid of you, Damon. He could not trust you any more than I can trust you. Boom. And that's that's the big point. That's the big point. Let me talk about this. This is a huge point. That part in particular is huge. Why? She addresses, no, he was not afraid of you. He couldn't trust you. Trust is such a big, important issue especially when it comes to the heir to the Iron Throne. Because when Rhaenyra was first being appointed the heir to the throne by Viserys, Viserys told her about the prophecy, about how this is only to be told from king to heir, and shows her the Valyrian blade, tells her about the prophecy of the coming darkness, Viserys never trusted Damon to tell him that prophecy. We know this from season one. He like chokes her out because he doesn't know what she's talking about. And then she laughs and she's like, oh, he never told you. Wow. So in that sense, that's another great reason why Rhaenyra is the rightful heir. Because she was the only heir appointed by Viserys who was told the prophecy of the prince that was promised. Aegon II. The usurper. He was never told about the prince that was promised prophecy. Never told. So, he's not the rightful heir. And then the confrontation comes to a head when Rhaenyra is actually like, you struck down a child. And then, what does Damon say in response? It was a mistake. <laughs> then we get this bomb dropped by Rhaenyra right here. She just looks at him and says, you're pathetic. And I was like, dang, you're pathetic mic drop that is a mic drop moment right there i was like that's cold that's cold you're pathetic mic drop and then she looks away from him can't even make eye contact with him anymore sits down doesn't even look his direction anymore after saying you're pathetic mic drop where are you oh i don't i don't see you you're not you're no longer relevant. That was definitely one of the more juicier, more interesting scenes in this episode with characters I actually am invested in, care about. These are obviously like the two main characters, Rhaenyra and Daemon, and that whole confrontation of, what did you actually tell them? Did you tell them to kill a child? And he ends up admitting it finally at the end. He says, it was a mistake. And then she says, you're pathetic. Mic drop. Cold, Rhaenyra. Too cold. But that's why you come in at the number two moment. Thank you, Rhaenyra, for just being too cold, but so hot with it. <laughs> I gotta be honest. So the Rhaenyra Damon confrontation comes in at our number two spot. But rounding out our list this week, the number one spot has to go to Adios Otto. Otto's dismissal as Hand of the King. Finally, finally we get Otto out of there. Bye bye Otto. The whole episode, Otto is Mr. Cool. You must not be shaken by this. But then what does he finally do at the end of the episode? He gets shooketh. Because at this point, Aegon figures out the guy who had an accomplice who murdered my son. He said it was a rat catcher. He couldn't say for sure which rat catcher it was. So Otto says, what have you done? And he's like, what? The rat catches. What did you do? <laughs> Aegon's expression is just like, oh, oh, I had them hanged. Yeah. Just the sheer bluntness of Aegon. Oh, yeah, I had them hanged. 
Great delivery there. And then, you know, Otto just snapping, just losing it, saying, idiot. And Crispin's just like, oh, you watch how you talk to your king. And then Otto drops this bomb. He's like, the king is a grandson, and my grandson is a fool. It's just like, Otto, are you a dragon? Because you're spitting fire. I, I kind of like it. Otto's just like, he's worse than a fool. He's killed and murdered innocent men. Aegon's like, yeah, but one guilty one, at least. Uh, which is savage, Otto says, and hang them from the city walls for all to see. And Aegon says, you plot against the king, and I'll pay it back a hundredfold. Otto goes on and says, they were fathers and brothers and sons, and their wives and children are gathered outside of our gates to weep and curse your name. Like, just Otto's performance here, I've never been an Otto fan, but I gotta say, for him getting kicked out, his dismissal, Otto did pop off with his acting. He really did. He says, with your child's blood, we bought their approval. With your mother's tears, we made a bitter sacrifice against the depravities to come. And you've just thrown it all away. <laughs> I mean, the lines from Otto, I gotta admit, they kind of won me over this week. Like, for the number one spot. It definitely does go to Otto. Great performance. And it's his last kind of hoorah is hand of the king and we get to say adios Otto, bye bye he goes on and says after all i've done for you thoughtless self-indulgent and Aegon's like all right relax at least i actually did something you know i haven't answered injury to the crown with what wailing hurrying favor with the fishwives i'm not gonna be thought as some weak little puh <laughs> You know, then Otto explains, even now, news of Rhaenyra's monstrous crimes are spreading throughout the realm and the great houses will falter and not have any choice but to come to our side. And Aegon says, I wish to spill blood, not ink. We must act. And then we get to one of the funniest lines in the whole episode, which is when Aegon looks over, he says, so Kristen Cole has acted. It's this part here. And then Otto's, <laughs> Otto's reaction here. And what has Sir Kristen Cole done? <laughs> just, <laughs> just classic Otto. And then this part, I gotta play. I gotta play this part. Hold up. And what has Sir Kristen, Kristen Cole, Cole done? done? He like, sent Sir Arik to slay Rhaenyra. Alone. This part is so good. He's pretending to be his own twin. Brilliant. <laughs> and then Otto's brain just shuts down. Literally does the windows shut down noise. Na, 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 na. After hearing that plan, he's pretending to be his own twin. Brilliant. Otto can't even comprehend the stupidity of that. And then Otto's just like, God help us all. God's help us all. <laughs> he doesn't say the correct one. God help us all. But you know what I mean. And then Otto rightfully just snaps again and is just like, you conceded to this prank without consulting me or the council? Like, what, what are you doing? You Instead of judgment... You display impetuousness and diminish us in the eyes of our enemy. Ill-considered, trifling, you know, Otto's just had enough of this. He's finally just fed up with all of this Aegon antics. And I love to see it. I gotta be honest, I love to see it. Otto, pop off. Pop off, Otto. Let's go. Then Otto's just like, bruh, do you ever think of your father, his forbearance, his judiciousness, his dignity. And then right as he says his dignity, we get Aegon saying fudge dignity, which was a good delivery. It actually got me, actually had me laughing there. Let's see, maybe we could play it. This part. You never think of your father. His forbearance. Forbearance. His judiciousness. judiciousness. His dignity. dignity. Fuck dignity. <laughs> I want revenge. Dude, kind of savage with it. I'm not going to lie. Just how he just lays into that fudge word f dignity i want revenge oh we get it Aegon. we get it dude and Aegon's just like listen old man old timer my father's gone okay the rules have changed now all right and otto's just like viserys was right about you and Aegon just kind of like shrugs it off and Aegon says he made me king and then otto drops this bombshell right here and he just literally laughs at him and says is that what you think I was like, Ooh, okay, Otto. Like, actually admitting fully that Otto himself was the one who made Aegon King. 
and not Viserys. So again, if you're team green, you're essentially just team Otto. And it's like, okay, well, Otto just admitted he made Aegon king. Viserys didn't. He pretty much spelled it out right there. So, is that what you think? We could play that line. Just that one line. He made me king. <laughs> Literally laughs at him and admits. Is that what you think? Is that what you think? <laughs> Essentially saying, little pup, I'm the one. I'm the big dog that made you king. Don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. Remove your badge, oh, Sir Otto. Before you go, Sir Otto, remove your badge. Finally, we get to say, adios, Otto. See ya. Your time has come. Bye bye. Bye bye, Otto. It's been fun. It's been real. But it's time for you to go. It's time to go. Okay. Aegon says, you were my father's hand, not mine. Take it off. Just love the bluntness of Aegon. I gotta be honest. Very blunt with it. Very straightforward. He's a straight shooter. Gotta give him that. And Otto just kind of looks at him and is just like, you wouldn't dare. <laughs> and Aegon's like, huh, I've dared. And I find it stimulating. <laughs> That's what he says. I find it stimulating. Otto lays it into him. He's like, you think yourself clever, but without a strong hand to guide. Really getting these last little moments in, these last little jabs in at Aegon. And as he's taken off the pin, Aegon looks over him and drops this. I was not expecting this. Give it to Ko. Give it to, give it to who? And then he lets out those smallest Great. little Little pussy's little, your grace, your grace, it's the pussy's little puss. Aegon explains, in this hour, you have proven yourself more worth than a hundred old men. And he then says, he then drops like this kind of cold line. He says, my new hand will be a steel fist. My new hand will be a steel fist. Kind of cold, Aegon, actually kind of cold. But then this auto line, regret this you will regret this and dude Aegon's just like mm, i don't really care you dinosaur how about you they'll be extinct and then he says give, give it to him you. sauce it over sauce it over and he doesn't just give it to him nicely he has to yeet it over to sir crispin throws it at his feet a disrespect of the of the hand i mean I gotta be honest, I was not expecting Sir Kristen Cole to get it. I really was not. So the fact that I was not expecting Otto to leave this episode, wasn't expecting Sir Kristen Cole to get the hand, those unexpectedness of this scene, plus just the delivery of the lines by Otto and Aegon makes the scene very rewatchable. Re great acting, great writing, great line delivery, and very unexpected with Sir Crispin getting the hand, that's obviously gonna hurt Team Green because, you know, he's gonna be the steel fist, quote unquote, but he's really gonna be, you know, going up against Damon. That's my theory, is that he's gonna be going up against Damon and there's gonna be a rematch between them because Sir Crispin fought Damon in the tourney in the pilot of the show, right? On horseback. But now with Sir Crispin being the hand of the king to Aegon, and Damon essentially being the hand in a sense to Rhaenyra. They're gonna go head to head, not on horseback this time, but on dragon back. And yes, I do think they're gonna give Kristen a dragon somehow. I think it's gonna happen. I think maybe Helena's dragon, maybe? I know there's this whole like dragon are bound to their riders thing, but I think they might change that. We kind of got teased with that, with Sea Smoke being shown to the new characters in Driftmark. And technically, Lanor is still alive, so that bond still exists. But I think one of those new Driftmark characters are going to get Sea Smoke, and I think Sir Crispin is going to get his own dragon. I think he's going to get Helena's dragon because she's not going to be riding out the battle anytime soon, right? There's no way Helena is going to be riding Dreamfire. But yeah, Sir Crispin is going to be going up against Damon as the new hand, and yeah, that's going to be hype. And this last little jab by Aegon saying, "Oh, Otto, by the way." You're dismissed. Yeah. Adios, Otto. Great. Just to love to see that. Just one little, one last little jab at Otto. Yeah. Enjoy the red keep while you walk out. You're dismissed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Otto. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
Those were the top five best moments of season two, episode two, Rhaenyra the Cruel, quote unquote. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, send it to a friend if they like House of the Dragon or Game of Thrones stuff. We're gonna be covering the new episodes and doing top five breakdowns of them every single week. So stay tuned for next week. I know the next episode is definitely gonna have some dragon fights and that'll be really fun to talk about. But I hope you guys enjoyed me breaking down what I thought in my opinion were the top five best moments of the episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Peace out.